Hello, Battlerite fans, and welcome to Champions at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 with a few replays, and yeah, you'll notice that it's actually Odium replays now because the Odium is allowing me to do all this stuff. I mean, it does show the thing at the bottom, but otherwise, yeah, it allows me to do actual full replays. I can actually cast replays that people put on the Odium, which is cool. So this first one's going to be between Dramana and Pharos, my one time, my at one point caster and PRL or co-caster. Very cool guy. Also a very skilled player. Against Skoro and the Mighty Tofu. I've not really heard of the other two, but yeah. Drum so, Ashken Croak against Sirius and Varish. I can't say I'm thinking it's going to be easy for Faros and Dramon. Of course, without any healers on their team, they're going to have to be very both careful and aggressive. Obviously, they don't want to be staying back too far because that way... Basically, they can't really deal any to poke damage. Doesn't work super well. And it, to that end, Faros is jumping in to try to do exactly that. Getting the chains off, or trying to go for the chains done, trying to go for the old Croak Jade combo, but with Ashka this time with Firestorm, but, uh, or Flamestruck rather, but unfortunately not managing to get a whole lot of damage and taking quite a bit as well. At this point, though, Faros and Draman still ahead. To see coming out just the last second into the stun, getting. Getting Skoro forced out of position. I mean, that's the main thing. They're focusing entirely on Skoro. They want to get the healing out of the way, because if they do that, then they don't have to worry too much about poking. They can get the healing out of the way. They can just poke all they like. And actually, at this point, they're doing very well for themselves. They are being appropriately aggressive. They are making sure that they are not taking damage they don't have to, but also realizing, of course, that they can't just sit back and poke. On the other hand, though, Draman about to go down. Faros able to still put pressure on Skoro, but if Draman takes basically one more hit, they're done, and that is that hit. There it is. And Faros forcing this into a 1v1. Thankfully for them, avoiding the 1v2, but still in a disadvantageous position. However, Mighty Tofu with their... Well, haven't used meter for that one. No. I'll just reform. Yeah, that, that was meter. Yes, they had to use meter. They did manage to get it back, thanks to the center orb. But at this point... This one, we're also seeing a bit of a weakness in the current replay system, but regardless, yeah, Faros, I, it's going to be very difficult for them to get out of this, and there's an ultimate miss, but one good shot. There it is. There's the shot from Mighty Tofu to finish the match. Good effort from Faros and Draman, but it is definitely difficult when you are having to work with basically a disadvantage. I mean, when you think about it, they have to be fighting from a position of a lot of aggression, not a whole lot of of contingencies at all. Now, like I said, Skoros, hunting Skoros was a good idea. Unfortunately, not quite enough focus. Drama got a little bit too careless, but as long as that remains relatively under control, as long as Drama makes sure to be relatively careful, and now that they do have their shield, they are going to have a much easier time to have the shield, the fire ward battle, right? So they are going to get their shields up every time they go for the searing flight, and that's exactly what they need. So... With that, back into the match proper, and there's the camouflage, there's the stun, there's the counter to try, well, would have been really good to deal with it, and not able to, actually, oh, going, okay, so they're going for Mighty Tofu, that's, that's the new plan, don't even let Skaro get their healing off, just go for Mighty Tofu, and, wow, within like 10 seconds, managing to pull that off, forcing Skoro back, and getting the orb for themselves, so at this point, Faros and Draman at a massive advantage. Skoro, not sure what they're going to try to do here. It's rather difficult for a serious to deal with this stuff. A counter would have been an okay idea there, but looks like Faros is already being mindful of that. However, Skoro, I mean, they do have the healing. It's just a matter of making sure they don't get too focused down, and they are indeed trying to be careful, trying to stay away from major fights. If they can get one character at a time, great. And there's the Petrify. That's exactly what they need. It's not long, it's not much, but it is something. However, unfortunately, Skoro, so far down health. Only 17% of their health left in the outer area of the map. And there's the killing blow with the good old Infernal Scorch coming out of Draman there. So, one and one. At this point, relatively even. It is playing out as you would expect for a match where one side is the only side has pure damage, has no healing. Because that's kind of how it goes. When you have no dam when you have no healing, you can't really do much. I mean, if you think about it. Like I said, the, you don't have that contingency. You don't have the fact that you can poke in. The side that has healing can go in and out. And the problem, one of the hard parts about this matchup, actually, that's making it a bit easier for Draman and Faros is that Skoro is playing Sirius. And while Sirius is a healer, 
Sirius is a melee healer, which makes things a bit tricky since since Scaro can just well, since Scaro has to rush in to some extent, they can't. Scaro and Mighty Tofu can't just hang back and work that way. Like the way you often want to work when you're doing this sort of setup where you have a healer and your opponent doesn't is to just poke them out. Like just keep dealing damage and eventually you will beat them. It's a slow and grindy process. Works particularly well with Lucy and Older, but. With Sirius, it's trickier because Sirius tends to get into the fight. And at this point, though, it is working out at very nice counters coming in from both Sir the Sirius and Virus players, both Scaro and Mighty Tofu. But turning around, Scaro starting to get punished for their aggression. Still, Draman being again the focus, not even worrying about Faros, letting Faros do their thing. That may be dangerous, though, and Mighty Tofu does not go down as, Scar as sure Faros at all, but Draman does go down. Which means, oh, Faros, I think they're probably going to try. Are they going to go for double ultimate? Probably going to go for deceit into, oh, there's, okay, first ultimate. Nah, the deceit. They're not going to go for the ultimate, which is fairly wise at this point. They can force some escapes out of their opponent. Okay, there's the first ultimate. And second ultimate will be, there it is, just on Mighty Tofu. There's the stun. That's what you need. When you're using Croak, you can't just use Venom Wind on its own. You have to use Camouflage or something else, or make sure they have no escape abilities, which against Varus isn't too hard. So down goes Mighty Tofu, Scaro, and Faros. Faros coming in with this. What total 1v2 up. They were pretty much fighting a full health team, or well, not full health team, but like 70% total health team. And pulling it down into a 1v1 with Scaro on their own, and Scaro again in quite the tough situation, easier than the last time. But Faros, I don't see him easily losing this. And there's the camouflage. There's, well, there's the seat into the camouflage. To all the damage. And once again, that ultimate coming out there from Scoro hasn't doing a, hasn't been doing a whole lot of good. I mean, they have one more round. The one thing I would say that Scoro might want to invest in a bit more of is using their Crescent Gales. I mean, it's the only thing that Sirius has that works in this situation, but yeah. Use the Crescent Gale and down... Wow, right into the fog too, but... Down goes the... The red team once again. But yeah, Faros... Bit of a risk in the Venom Wind. I mean, it wasn't a huge risk. They had a health advantage, so even if there was a Celestial Split to get out of there, Skoro would probably have died. Anyway, though, Mighty Tofu and Skoro, they can hang back. I mean, Skoro, sort of. If they get the orb, they can hang back. Skoro can throw out a few Crescent Gales, like... Rush in, maybe hit a few times, build up some meter, hang back, throw Crescent Gales. I mean, they deal 24 damage a shot, so it's still useful. They just need to actually do that. Once they do that, then, you know, coming up a little bit, they just don't need to be that aggressive. That's always the thing, is that if they're too aggressive, and also if they're too separated from their teammate, it becomes really difficult for them to be able to take advantage of their healing. And once again, Squirrel is going in a fairly more aggressively but red team is sticking together fairly well. Both players are mean back into relatively pokey stage. And going for Draman. I mean, they are constantly going for Draman, and that is the right call. Given what happened in the first round and how that basically won them the round. Yeah, totally agree with that. The last round basically got won because Farwas was able to take Tofu down quite a lot before... Ooh, and then Draman... Losing Draman... Going after... Oh, that, that Celestial Spit came out not in time enough. Went after Skoro. Successfully going after Skoro. Killing Skoro. And now it's Mighty Tofu against Faros. Both at nearly full health. 1v1 coming out here. And to some extent, Mighty Tofu has an advantage. But they did run out of Wuju before they were able to deal with the camouflage. Still didn't get too much damage from it, though. And thankfully, they do have the right that does cause them... To, cause, to have a burst whenever they use their shield. And there's the Wuju. There's the shield. I was wondering if that was going to happen in response to a possible camouflage. And indeed it did. Stopping it from really doing anything. So well done to Mighty Tofu. Although, gotta say, Faros is really understanding when Mighty Tofu is going to do this. Stuff. Mighty Tofu getting a little bit predictable on their counters. And now Faros in basically the position to take this. There's the counter as the camouflage goes down. And Mighty Tofu... Gets taken down as the Scaro. Well done, Faros and Draman. Because that match is tricky. It's a, it's a tricky thing to do when you have that setup. So, yeah, that was that. Good job to both of you, and definitely good demonstration of how you how can make Croak just work really well. And I mean, Croak does well in one v two situations.
So I'm not terribly surprised that that worked out, even though Draman died. Draman did a lot of work, did a lot of damage, and that helped, especially to Skoro in that last round, where that was... Skoro was, I think, at like 25% health before it went to a 1v2, so at that point, it wasn't hard to make it a 1v1. Although the third round is where it really got tricky, where you had... Where it was very nearly the... Yeah, it was actually just about 2v1. If you look at it, it's like... Go back to that round, it was... In the 2v1 situation, yeah, it was pretty high health from the red team. Like, as soon as Draman died... Now there's Draman. So, yeah, once Draman died, it was... 44, and then the healing with the Astral... Yeah, that was definitely... Okay, Faros at full health was the main thing there, but still. So taking out Draman definitely helped, but overall, a lot of it was that Draman did a lot of damage, enough to support Faros, while Faros went for the Deceit play for 1v2. Although, also, Mighty Tofu got a little bit predictable with those counters. So yeah, be careful with the predictability and counters and camouflage. It's especially tricky when you have... when Croak's right next to you. That's where it gets very difficult. Anyway, next match is going to be a completely different match. It is going to be between it's going to be between Marilyn playing as Shifu with Kafriel as as Jumong. I don't know what camera the name for some reason. With Saigi as or Saig Saig as Jade and. John GGG, who I'll refer to from now on as just John, as the Esmo. Wow, this is... Red Team's composition is especially interesting, being that a lot of people have talked about Esmo as being essentially just Jade 2.0. So, essentially, it's a double Jade combo, just about, against Shifu Jumong, which has got to be the slipperiest combo in the entire game. Let's see if that actually pans out as a way things go. At this point, red team taking pretty convincing control of the center. And it looks like at this point, yeah, John GG did go for the Chaos Grip Silence. So, or, yeah. Chaos Grip Silence, so that's not surprising. They're kind of curiously going for a Chaos Grip build. I haven't seen a lot of Esmos recently, but we'll talk about that later. At this point, Calf in a tricky situation, getting split up from their teammate. Marilyn managing to get back in a position, but... Well, actually, a bit of a gambit. A bit of a gambit. Blue team does manage to have the center orb. They did lose a lot of HP, though, and Mary... Is that Mary... Yeah, Mary Jane. Oh. Mary Jane is still taking a lot of damage. Wow. That was a clutch javelin right there. Had that javelin not happened, Mary Jane would be dead. But Psyche just hunting down Mary Jane. There's the final shot to kill it off. And Calf trying to get rid of Psyche. Actually, will successfully get rid of Psyche. If it weren't for the smoke fail, would have gotten rid of Psyche, but not able to do so. And there's the snipe. Missing the snipe. Had that snipe hit, that would have been the match for Psyche and John GGG. Still a tricky situation. And and there is the final set of blows. All the damage coming in there. Well, Jade and Esmo is basically just going to be a matter of rushing you down with their main attacks. Revolver shot and arcane fire just to tear you to shreds. Didn't see a lot of chaos scripts coming out there, though, actually, from John. I was a bit surprised. I expected more of that just because they did go for the right for dealing with that. Of course, Calf and Mary Jane going for a fairly typical right. Wait, Calf going for... Okay, Prowl Duration. I guess that is fairly typical. Mary Jane is probably going to go for the Kunju Charges because that's what you always go for as Shifu. If not, I will be very surprised. Actually, come to think of it, they didn't go for Impale Healing either. Or... Well, yeah, that's pretty still pretty typical. I don't, I'm a little surprised they went for the... Fleet Futuration, but they did go for the Kunju Charges, which is basically correct. And it looks like Esmo going for the... Going for the Displaced Rites. Well, Psyche... Oh, I didn't notice. Psyche was going for the Blast Vault, Blast Vault Stealth, which is generally considered a useless right. Just because it doesn't really give you that much compared to what could what you could get from Disabling Shot Root. And at this point, though, Psyche is going to be going for... Oh, actually getting count down a lot. While John just tearing apart Caffriel. Caffriel finally getting John to stand still with their Reign of Arrows. But even then, with properly timed Arcane Barrier, that doesn't really accomplish much. Caff finally getting a bit on there, but taking loads of damage as a result of a snipe. 
Managed to almost pin down John, but not able to su successfully do so. And there's the final snipe to finish off Mary Jane, taking a 2-0 for the red team. But yeah, I'm a little surprised that Psyg is going for went for that blast vault. Right. I'm not surprised they went for the disabling shot shots. That's pretty typical. But yeah, Blast Vault Stealth is one of those things that's handy because it does mean you can use Smoke Veil more readily, kind of. But it's just compared to Disabling Shot Root and what you can get off that. Or compared to even to some extent, okay, Stealth and Snipe. Stealth resetting Snipe is contentious. I wouldn't use it against this composition. I use it occasionally, but I'm not super keen that it's a great right either. Overall, Jay's round run rights are two okay rights and disabling shot root, which is a good right. And so I going for okay, so typical, typical crowd control, the junk shot wall, wall stun, and everything else is about what you normally would see from all these, all these characters. So pretty typical right choices, but once again, double one v one, same as last time. Jay and Shifu with one fight, Esmo and Jumong with the other fight. Saiga at this point, still managing to win their fight. Missing a few key shots, though, and Caffrey, on the other hand, taking the center orb, which is what they need to do. Getting that black arrow to stay out of range, but at this point, 2v1 onto Mary Jane, and finally get back into a teamfight situation. Saig taking a lot of damage, getting focused very hard, kind of showing that, to some extent, their, their choice of round one right was actually quite effective. The problem with that is the smoke trail. You, get, you can see where someone is going with Blast Vault and deal with them that way. At any rate, down goes Saig. Caffriel against John, and we already saw John got the upper hand last time. And still managing again, throwing out throwing out the pseudo flamethrower. But not managing to actually deal a huge amount of damage. There's the Chaos Grip missing as Black Arrow deals with it, but the Arcane Barrier just stopping that steady shot from finishing off John. And there's the Rain of Arrows locking them down, and there we go, Caffriel taking a round. Blue team not getting shut out, finally on the board. And as Caffriel manages to get the upper hand on John. So somewhat even for their own 1v1s. And also evening it up a little bit for the match as a whole. Yeah, John's choices for Esmo rights, those are fairly typical of what I've seen since the main since the recent patch. Well, somewhat recent patch. Since Chaos Griff rights got nerfed, like Esmo's rights in general got shuffled. That's been a relatively typical distribution they've had there. Most Everything of what everyone's going for is relatively typical, except for, like I said, this. Not that it's been punished, though. Like I said, the smoke trail is a big deal. But it hasn't come up yet. So into round four. Looks like Mary Jane Caffrey trying to figure out what to do, just focusing on making sure that they have no outs. Oh, no, they're just arguing. Never mind. That's not a good sign. I'm pretty sure this is actually a league match, so... Yeah, just solo queue, quick match stuff. Not really all that. Okay, solo queue, league match. Quick match is a very specific term. And Caffriel taking a lot of damage, getting knocked into the wall. And there was that junk shot stun coming in as well. Caffriel forced to get out of there, but being pulled in with a silent chaos grip. Turning into a 2v1 against Mary Jane. Mary Jane having to deal with the smoke failed enemies and not having counter on their own. Getting finished off because of that. And that is game. It was Seg and John. As blue team clearly had some coordination issues I was not aware of. Because that's a thing that happens. <sighs> yeah, just as a general thing, don't be surprised if you're playing and if you start to get really in your teammates' face about stuff, they might... They might just decide, you know what, I don't really care. It's just a bad sign of coordination. Or a sign of bad coordination. Generally a bad sign overall. 